I want to share something with you. Let me just try to put it in perspective by saying uh, from, Afghanist from Afghanistan to Ameristan by 9-11, and let me give a couple of verses here uh, to help us uh, get uh, established in this from Afghanistan to Ameristan uh, by 9-11. Now, a little 11, 11 is the whole lump. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 6 through 11, Jesus is preaching about the Pharisees, a religious group that he loathes. And he said, watch out for them, their teaching. Because a little eleven, eleven is a little eleven is a whole lot. But I've been watching the evacuation plans. There's some six to three thousand people, as I speak, that have been evacuated from Afghanistan into parts of the world uh, that will ultimately lead to uh, the east, the east, and to uh, to the west rather, and to America. I was watching most of the. Uh, people boarding those commercial flights, board, boarding those um, C-17s, um, and it was kind of eerie. It was almost as if I watched in a movie or going back 70 years to watching how the uh, Jews were um, set free from Dachau um, and, and, and from the other concentration camps and and how Poland was finally set free as I watched those women and children and men carrying babies in the bags and everything they had on their back and in their bags boarding those planes, leaving Afghanistan and heading to Ameristan. You know, between COVID-19 uh, and uh, the defeat of Afghanistan, that America is suffering from both the largest number of deaths and uh, afflictions of COVID-19, and this defeat in Afghanistan is devastating. The defeat didn't just, just it, it happen as a result of the fact that the American forces were defeated by the Taliban and 20-year war, the longest war in American history, and yet they could not defeat the goat herders. The Taliban, a small ragtag, if you will, fighting group that defeated uh, the world's largest, most powerful, most if you will, funded military apparatus, rap, apparatus on the planet, and yet they got beat by 75,000 goat herders, calling themselves the Taliban. And when I say goat herder, I don't mean to be pejorative or facetious or ugly or smart. I, I got something to prove. I just want to emphasize the technology of the goat herder based, based on the technology that, of the, that the goat herders defeated Google, that the goat herders defeated the Pentagon, that the goat herd, that the that the that the Taliban in their mountain resorts defeated the, the Pentagon, the world's largest building, got defeated by the Taliban. By the way, let me say this. I'm not un American. Don't think this amount of the I'm rejoicing. I am not. I'm just reporting. I'm not rejoicing at this at all. God forbid. I do have to tell you, however, I do respect the Muslims as an authentic group born of Abraham. Abraham is the father of the Jew and the Muslim. And, of course, uh, Sarah is the, the mother of the Jew and uh, Hagar, the mother of the Muslim. So I respect Muslim. Let's be straight about what we can straight about. But I don't disrespect, nor do I wish to in any way display contempt for America that somehow or another I'm rejoicing. I am not. I'm just reporting America got defeated, that the Pentagon got defeated by a campfire in the mountains of Afghanistan. And if that ain't a news, I don't know what is. But now they're leaving Afghanistan and they're coming to what's going to soon be Ameristan because a little leaven leavens a whole lump. My brother and sister, let me tell you that, you know, we're going to end up with some 300, 400,000 Afghanistanis in America. And of that 300 to 400,000, you're going to have 50 to 60,000 who are going to be members or of some of the alleged terrorist groups that they're never going to, they're never going to, if you will, assimilate into the American idea. These Taliban people, the 300,000 or so that's going to come, they're never going to assimilate and become swine eaters. They're not going to do it. They're not going to assimilate and become American, uh, if you will, of Sabbath breakers, they're not going to do that, and they're not going to assimilate and 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 accept man with man marriage and woman with woman marriage. 
they're not going to assimilate into that. They're, 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 you couldn't do it in their land and coming here to America, they're not going to assimilate. Uh, but what Jesus would say about such a circumstance is that most likely that the Afghanistanis are probably going to have a better shot biblically, socially, universally, humanitarianly to convert in Americans to stop them from eating swine and to convert Americans to Catholic Church to worship on the Sabbath. There's a better shot of the leaven of the, of the uh, Afghanistans to convert the Ameristans than it is, because America, you're not going to turn these people into swine eaters. I'm telling you, they're not going to do it. They're not going to break the Sabbath. They're not going to, under any circumstance, ever accept man marrying man and woman marrying woman and then being performed as a part of the armed services. They're not going to go for that. And I want to, I'm not saying this rejoicingly, I'm just prophesying that as well, and please listen to this, as well as sitting around a campfire in the mountains of Afghanistan, the goat herders were able to plan and put together a military fighting spirit that has taken down the Pentagon. And can I tell you why? I'm glad you asked. You see, the, 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 the Taliban wants to move Jahadin. They were fighting for principles like forbidden to eat swine. They were fighting for principles, principles like man shall not lie with man as with womankind. If so, he is to be put to death. They were fighting for the Sabbath is holy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. They were fighting for that. They were fighting for that principle. They were fighting for the religious principle. They weren't fighting for some constitution that says you can divorce or that you can kill babies or that you can marry man to man. They weren't fighting for such a, a rag as that. They were fighting for the biblical. And that's why 75,000 were able to defeat 500,000 of the best trained, best, if you will, financed military force on the planet with the largest planning center called the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia. They used campfire faith to defeat America. I'm not saying that rejoicing. Please don't misunderstand me because I'm passionate. I'm just passionate. That's all. I just I like to deliver. I'm a preacher, man. That's my cadence. I deliver. I deliver with, with conviction. And I want to convince you. And I want you to think about something for just a second. You see, if America didn't go to Afghanistan with soldiers that were permitted to be transvestite. Now think about that for just a second. Think about that for just a second. Bringing transvestite soldiers to Afghanistan. Or women knowingly having sexual intercourse with other women on Afghanistan land. Sabbath breakers, swine eaters. For 20 years, for 20 years, it wasn't America that was defeated. It was the debauchery of America that was defeated by the Taliban. My brother, my brother, this is just how that is. And you know, the, maintaining a non-swine eating, and by the way, non-shellfish eating as well, principle would defeat any nation. Keeping the Sabbath, God will fight for you the way that he, he fought for Moses. You keep the Sabbath the way that the Taliban keeps the Sabbath, God will fight for you. The way he fought for Moses, and for David, and for Hezekiah, and for Jehoshaphat. These people were violators of God's word. The Taliban, in essence, were keepers of God's word. They could not convert. But it ain't over with. No, mm -mm, it ain't over with yet. You know, here's, here's the other thing. America faces its greatest crisis ever. It hasn't happened yet. It's going to happen once these Taliban, non-swine eating, non-belief in LGBTQ Sabbath keepers uh, make it to American soil. It's the greatest crisis is yet to come. You haven't seen anything yet. Combined with the COVID-19 
and the rift that's going on between red states and blue states, there will be also uh, uh, the negotiator, the director of the CIA, Joe Biden, my time forbidden Biden, is going to have to negotiate with the Taliban to complete the evacuation process. They've already negotiated and they've given up more, whatever it is they've given up, whether it's more money. But the Taliban's gonna say, you wanna get everybody out? You're gonna have to let, we, we, none of us let these people come out of Hellman province and out of Herat, out of Kandahar. What you gonna give us? What you gonna give us, Joe? What you gonna give us, Joe? Hey, Joe! We ain't, we're not going to let the people go unless you give us something. And Joe going to have to give up something. Got to make negotiation. They're going to have to start giving up something. I'm not sure what it is, whether it's going to be money or whether it's going to be releasing bank accounts or whether it's going to be hiding money, giving money like Obama gave a, a trillion dollars to, uh, to Iran. And not that's just they're going to have to give up to complete the evacuations. And even probably there have been a whole lot of stuff given up now. Money and a lot of other things have been given up to get the 63,000 that's been evacuated so far, and they got another 250,000 to go. And there will be militant Muslims that will come. Surely the Afghanistanis, even the little babies carrying in their fathers and mothers' arms getting on those C-17 planes are not going to become swine eaters. They're not. They're not going to become Sabbath breakers like you Christians. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. And God's going to be with them and not with the Christians. Again, I'm not rejoicing. I'm not happy about any of this. I'm just reporting. If you don't like it, shut me down. But here, there will be militant Muslims, Muslims that will come because a large number of, of the Taliban and people that are getting on those planes think that America is the great Satan of the West. And even if they're coming to great Satan, they're going to see this as an opportunity to take Satan's kingdom down. And you're going to have a large swath of people getting on those flights that are going to be Muslims of a militant nature. And they're going to see Americas as infidels, as swine eaters, as LGBTQ worshipers, as Sabbath breakers. And they're going to convert. They'll do their best to convert America. So I think it's important that... Um, we come to terms with this. We understand that um, the greatest crisis for America is yet to come. And the thing I want to come, get, leave, leave you as a line with is that by 9-11, as the crow flies, as I sit here today, we're just a few days from 9-11. We're just a few days from se September, in the back end of August here. By 9-11... <laughs> There's going to be a new 9-11. <laughs> but this time, the planes will be brought, that will be bringing the Muslims in, will be brought in by the American carriers, by the C-17s. There's going to be another 9-11, far worse than the 9-11 20 years ago. There's going to be another 9-11 in just a few days. And I'm not saying that rejoicingly. I love America. I thank God. You know, I tell the Hamite people. And by the way, the Taliban's, Afghanis, they're Hamites, right? They're sons of Hagar. But I, I tell my Hamite brothers, we ought to get together and march down to Washington, D.C. in mass from every ghetto in America and stand on the Capitol building or on the, the, the Lincoln Memorial and say, thank God y'all brought us here as slaves because it's better here than it is in Mali and here we are able to learn to love and be washed in the blood of Jesus. So I love America. Don't you get me wrong. I'm just telling you. The 9-11 20 years ago ain't nothing like the 9-11 with all of the Taliban landing and all of the Afghanistan's landing in America over the next few days. Me. I'm James Ebbett Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. I want to ask you to come up close for just one second. And I, I want to talk to three-year and older veterans of the uh, Trust in Lord Hour, uh, the Open Rewards Prayer Meeting, the Manor Report, and the Pulpit of Power, those four ministries that we do every week, uh, producing at least 20 different ministries or sermons every week. If you are a three-year or older veteran, by old I mean four years, five years, six years, seven years, 10 years, 12 years uh, older veteran of 
of any of these ministries that we do on a daily basis every week, and you are not a supporter, you've not joined with the uh, the ministry to give your uh, to pledge your support and your alignment with what we've been teaching. I and I, my question is why. Yeah, you've had three years to observe us. You've had three years to listen to us on a daily basis, all weekend, all day long, any hour of the day. We're broadcasting. Uh, you've had three years to watch our various successes. You've three years to watch our ups and downs. You've had three years to listen to the tenor or the consistency of what we have said, whether we are consistent or whether we're all over the chart and what we do and what we believe. You've had three years to watch people around us who have made the commitment to join with our ministry and church and to financially support it. And by the way, I want to give another shout out to Brother Jesse Munez out there in San Bernardino, along with uh, uh, Goldfinger, who is just an extraordinary giver, and others that do extraordinary uh, giving to our ministry. My question is to you, if you are a three-year veteran or older, why haven't you joined? Why haven't you committed? And I suppose some of the reasons would say, well, Pastor Man, I belong to another church. And uh, why? How could you, how could you, after three years of hearing me teach about the Sabbath, about righteousness, about the tribulation, and listen to me faithfully as you do, and still go sit up in another pastor's face? How could you be? It's like you, it's like a woman sleeping with two men. You know, one she likes during the week and the other she likes on the weekend. It is it's hypocritical. Um, how could you do that? I mean, as I say, you start three months ago, I can understand. Well, it may take you some time to evaluate. It may take you some time to look at me, to discover you know, who I am. You say, well, pastor, that's not that I don't belong to another church or ministry. I, I, you, I'm with you. But there's some things you say I like, and there's some things you say I don't like. Why? Why is it that some, you, you've made a decision that there's some things that I, that you don't like are stronger than the things that you do like. I, you know, I am not a psychiatrist, but I am an analyst. And I have to tell you, I analyze the world and I, I understanding. But the understanding and wisdom tells me this, that if there are things that a person such as myself that I am saying, there, there is no room to disagree with what I am saying, unless your purpose is to find something to disagree with. Let's say, for instance, you say, well, I like the fact that you talk about Obama, but I don't like the fact that you talk about Trump. Let's say, for instance, you're one of those, right? Well, the purpose, it isn't that you, it isn't that you just like what I say about Obama, but don't like what I say about Trump. What it is, is that you are looking for a reason to support Trump. It isn't that you don't like it. It's just that you don't like the fact that I'm saying something about it. It isn't that what I'm saying is wrong. Let me put it that way. It isn't what I'm saying is wrong or indifferent. You know it's right. But you have, you've lived your life or you've come up or you've been raised with a doctrine that you can really live in a false reality. That's where you are. You've been raised in a doctrine that you can live in a false reality. That is to say, you can like the truth about Obama but you don't like the truth about Trump. And it's the same truth. It's the same truth. There's no difference. But because you have been indoctrinated to live in a false reality, you are really a person who needs psychological debriefing. But trust me, there are zillions of people around the world who live that way. I, there are people who know what I'm saying about Trump. Obama is right. They know it. But they choose to ignore it based on the fact that they find a reality that isn't true and they've settled in there. Say, so that's one of the reasons why I've not made a commitment because, you know, I, I, I don't like, the fact, I wish you would support what I support. But the, the truth of the matter is, then why do you come? You've given three years or more of your life to listen to me? Three years of your life to listen to me, and you know you and you're not tired of listening to me yet. And you've given three years of your life, and over the past three years, your life has been greatly upgraded. 
you've learned, you've been educated, you've been enlightened. And let me say this to you. If you make the commitment, say, well, Pastor, I'm joining with you and I'm going to support. I'm going to do the tithe and offering. I'm going to do the first fruit. I'm going to keep the Sabbath. Your life is going to soar. Now, listen to me very carefully. Now, I'm not going to leave you alone after this. Listen to me very carefully. You come as often as you come over the past three years because you're being helped. You're being educated. You're being enlightened. Right? Right. But the thing that you... Like whether you, you say, well, I like what you say about Obama, but I don't like what you say about Trump. You do the same thing with the word of God, such as you like the things I say, the teachings that I think, the way I explain the Bible, the way I break it all down and make it clear. But when it comes to things like money or tithing and offering or the Sabbath, well, that, you know, is also true. But because of your false reality, because you really need a psychological debriefing because of your false reality, you choose not to believe the tithe or the first fruit or the Sabbath. Now, it isn't that it isn't true. It's just true in all the other things I've said. But you live in a false reality where you, avoid, you try to ignore the truth about the tithe. And so you don't do it. But, it not, it's not, but the, everything else I say is good to go. Everything I ever say is good to go, good enough to share with your friends. It makes you laugh. It educates you. It enlightens you. But the tithe, well, and the full commitment to the ministry, well, the first fruit offerings, well, the Sabbath, that, that's all true as well. But you have chosen and you've been raised and indoctrinated to have a dual reality, which is dangerous. Jesus said this, and I'll leave you. He said, I would rather you be the hot or cold, but not lukewarm. You're lukewarm. You have a dual reality. He said, if you look warm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I would rather you be completely stomped down against Pastor Manny, trying to, dis trying to take him down. Be fully against him. Be against him with all of your strength. Or be fully for him with all of your strength. But don't be in the middle somewhere lukewarm. You're, you're better than to be spit out of the mouth of Jesus if you're lukewarm. So what's it going to be? You're going to make the commitment and grow and be even greatly better blessed or you're going to continue to walk in the lukewarm spit of the mouth of the Savior. I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. 